Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Today we're going to be looking at this from NZXT. It's basically a water cooler. It is the Kraken Z53, but what makes it different is it's got a digital display built on the actual water block. So you can put GIFs or pictures or whatever you want on there using their cam software, which sounds pretty good and slightly different. The recommended retail price of this is £209.99 and we do have links in the description below. Okay, so let's have a look at this NZXT Kraken Z53 water cooler. And as you can see, the front of the box is pretty white. It shows you the water cooler on there. And as you can see, you can see this nice, what looks like LED display on the actual water block, which looks pretty attractive, especially considering you are supposed to be able to change the image on this to a different image. Uh, you can even put like uh, animations like GIFs on there as well. So that sounds pretty cool and slightly different. Apparently the screen is 2.36 inches and it's supposed to be very bright. So let's have a look what else it says. It says 240 millimeter liquid cooler with LCD, LCD display and then the rest is not even in English. So it says the same thing in different languages. So that's pretty basic. The front at the top basically says exactly the same thing again on the sides you do have a little bit more specification on there it tells you about the pump radiator the caps limited six year warranty as well as all your sockets compatible with it's pretty much by the looks of it uh, compatible with pretty much everything it does even have thread ripper bracket not included on there but it will work on a thread ripper i suppose you have to get the bracket um, direct from them uh, but it doesn't specify from what i can see how you get hold of one of those it tells you about the fans as well uh, they go from 500 to 2000 rpm uh, it gives you a rough idea on the back gives you a bit more information again only this bit is in english it basically says customize your bow station with a 2.36 inch lcd screen uh, using the next cam data stay in control uh, incredible performance obviously we're going to check its uh, cooling performance in a few minutes so that looks pretty good and then on the other side of the box you've got all your different languages basically repeating pretty much what i've already said but other than that the bottom is pretty plain Okay, so this is what's in the box, minus obviously bits of plastic bags and cardboard. So first thing is, is the manual. When you open it up, it does look a little bit daunting because it's, uh, well, it's quite big, just to give you an idea, but it's not as bad as you think because you've got quite a lot of that is in different languages and stuff like that. But the basics is to fit it, if you're, you've got an Intel motherboard, you fit the back plate on your motherboard, you put four standoffs, obviously on the mother bar, the CPU side on there, and then you've got the brackets already on the cooler, which screws on top, and away you go. It's pretty simple. AMD, probably even more simpler, um, because it doesn't need the back bracket. You use the one what's built with your AMD motherboard. Uh, you just change this ring piece on the actual water pump, and then, well, screw it in, it's simple as that. It shouldn't be as bad, but again, full information is in the manual, which I'm not gonna run through how to exactly fit it because there's plenty of videos out there, even from NZXT. So that should be pretty simple for you to do. Inside, you've also got, obviously, the bracket for the back for your Intel motherboards we mentioned, and this ring piece, which replaces the Intel one on there if you're using AMD. Again, information on their website, how to fit it or look in the manual. You've got three bags of screws, which tells you what's what for what, and then there's one for AMD, which makes it pretty simple. 
apparently it's pretty easy to fit it looks it from what I've seen so obviously I'll try that out in a few minutes on top of that you have got two fans obviously these attached to the radiator with believe it or not the screws what are in the packet here so it's pretty straightforward the 12 centimeter fans uh, and they have obviously got your four pin headers on there to plug in not necessarily into the motherboard but into this spaghetti junction of cables the spaghetti junction of cables basically is sort of a splitter combiner so it uh, basically powers the actual water block as well as the fans and then you plug that into your motherboard and your uh, power supply using the SATA connection so it's pretty straightforward in all honesty there is also another cable this is going to be your RGB cable is the best way of putting it, but it's not a traditional RGB um, connection. It's basically a USB 2 connection, so you need to make sure your motherboard has got a free USB 2 connection, otherwise you're going to have to unplug something, for example, your front USB ports. So they end there, what looks like a USB micro mini cable would plug into the block and then the USB 2 header would plug into your motherboard and that's going to control the lighting effects on the actual cooler so you don't specifically need a motherboard with RGB, ARGB or anything like that but you do require a free USB 2 port which is getting more and more common these days as less people are using them because they're moving over to USB 3, 3.1, 3.1 Gen 2 and so forth. So let's have a closer look at the fans as you can see there, there it's seven blades in total the mounting screw holes are rubberized, so that's good. And otherwise, it's a pretty much standard fan, nice braided cable on there. It's all black with a sort of, a, well, it's black with a sort of a slight gray tone as you get on a lot of the NZXT stuff, um, which is quite a nice design. They are not RGB, these bits will not light up. So if you do want RGB fans on here, you're gonna have to purchase them separately. Now down to the actual water block and the reservoir, or the radiator should we say. Obviously there's a piece of plastic on the bottom to help protect the bottom. You have got thermal paste pre-applied on the bottom as you can see there. Looks nice and shiny what we can see. That's the Intel fitting. It does twist off if you wanted to take that off. Uh, and then you just basically replace it with the AMD fitting. So it's not too difficult. You've got your two water pipes coming off of it, obviously in and out. They are nicely braided as well. Go into the radiator, which looks pretty standard in all honesty. It doesn't seem to be anything overly special about that, but you can actually see it there. You can see, you can see all the way through. Uh, looking at the top of the water box, Oh, go on to your CPU. Sorry for the bumping and bangs, hard to turn these things around. So it says connect all cables before tuning, uh, turning on. Well, obviously, okay. So make sure you connect all the cables up to your motherboard. Otherwise, well, it's not gonna cool anything down, is it? So, but if you peel that off, if we can, come on. It just looks like a shiny dark mirror is probably the best way. So you're not going to see anything on that screen until you obviously plug it in, as it says. So otherwise, straightforward. Okay, as you can see, we've got the NZXT software installed and the water cooler is installed. You can see the block there. As soon as you turn it on, it comes up with your CPU temperature and that obviously displays on there. You have a few different options in the software just to show you. you've got PC monitoring so you can sh show all your stats. There is a little option at the top here which will put you like a, uh, a little screen up which you can monitor all your settings and so forth if you wish. You've got system specs in there, bits for games, I'll come to lighting in a second. You've got overclocking, you've got cooling so you can adjust the fan speeds and so forth. So if you wanted to up the pump to 100%, you can do. You just click on where it says custom and then you adjust it. So I'm going to make the pump go flat out 100%. And as you can hear, it doesn't make much of a difference, the pump. But when you put the fan on full,
it gets pretty loud. So, but then again, you want it to because obviously if it's getting the machine's getting hot, and that's how you want it to do. So you can change it between silence, performance, fixed, or custom. Just for this review, or at least this part of it, I'm putting it on silent, so you can hear what I'm saying. You've got power, which is if you've got power supply from them, audio and settings on there as well. But lighting effects, you've got lots of different options on here. You've got lighting mode at top, so you've got white spectrum and all this. This is mainly for if you've got other RGB devices plugged into it, or you've got a different type of cooler, not necessarily this one. Uh, but you would change your Kraken Z, well, it says Z3, but it's Z53 here. Um, so you just click on where it says LD, LCD display, it lets you rename it and all this. But if you click on that box, it gives you more options. So you've got, you can choose the colours you're wanting on the actual uh, water block there. So you can go have it go and go green to red and so forth. Let me just zoom into it so you can see it a little bit better. Sorry for the creaking. There you go. So you can change the colours exactly how you want it. Uh, you can change it from CPU um, temperature, you can got dual information, so it'll tell you again your CPU and GPU, you can again change the colours to what you want, so that's totally up to you, and the bars around the edge go up depending on the temperature as well, and you've got CPU temperature we've just been on, you've got liquid, so that's uh, the liquid temperature inside the cooler, you've got the GPU temperature on its own as well, again you can change the colours to whatever you wish. There's even an option for white on there. And you've got CPU load, so how much usage your processor is getting used. Same with your GPU, which is your graphics card. You've got CPU clocked speed, and as you can see here, it's 5.1 gigahertz. It's fluctuating a bit mainly because uh, the machine's not doing much, so it down clocks itself to save power and keep it cool. Uh, and you've also got the same with the GPU as well, again, because the GPU is not being used, it's only running at 100 megahertz. On there as well, you've got carousel, so you can choose the different options you want uh, on there, so you, it will change between the different options you've selected. So one minute you can have it on CPU temperature, next on GPU, next on water, then so forth. So it's up to you how you want it and how long the duration is. You can choose it at five second intervals between five seconds and 30. Uh, on there as well, you've also got Tai Chi. So that's basically makes that sort of a, like a color circle going around, as you can see there. And again, you can choose what colours you want. You can even change the colour of the NZXT logo if you wish. And there you go. So it gives you a rough idea. And then you've got Spectrum Wave, which just gives you like a multi-coloured uh, sort of a RGB effect like you'd get on a lot of fans and so forth. And last but not least, you have got GIF. This is where you can put whatever GIF you want, you can upload. At the moment it's spinning around like that because we haven't selected one. But once you find one, so you'll have to download one off the internet or create one uh, from a video. Uh, obviously there's lots of tools out there to allow you to do that. But just to give you a demonstration, this is one I just downloaded. Because obviously the CPU is the heart of your computer and that's what we're calling. Uh, I have found a GIF which has got believe it or not, a heart on it, which is just in time for obviously Valentine's Day. So it gives you a rough idea. And the picture quality is pretty good on there. And you can have anything on there. You could have a logo, you could have some clockwork, um, like cogs going round. Basically, however you want to design it, you can pretty much do that. So you ever thought, oh, it looked cool if my CPU cooler had a whatever on it. Well, you can put the whatever on it now. It's as simple as that. Okay, down to testing. In basics, all testing is done on the same machine, with the same version of Windows, with the same version of programs. We disable internet access, so no programs, updates or anything can be installed or updates what can affect any of the results.
All background tasks which are non-essential get disabled, so again they will not affect the testing. The testing room has air conditioning slash heaters built in to keep the temperature at 18.5 degrees Celsius. Also decibel levels are at a steady 45.6 decibels. When testing things like fans, we set the speeds at 50% and 100% and not auto because obviously if you've got something set at auto, it will adjust the fan speed to up and down to adjust the temperature to the optimal temperature so it can affect results. So we set the fan speeds at set uh, speeds like 50% and 100%. All testing is done on a 10700K i7 processor, 16 gig of RAM, as well as a FiCuda SSD and the same motherboard and all the other components are the same for every single test. Full specifications are in the description. Okay, so testing results. First of all, at 50% fan and pump speed, we got 47.3 decibels and with the fan speed and pump running at 100%, we got 59.8 decibels that's with a room decibel level of 46.1 so it was barely audible when it was running at 50% speed as you can see from the results above with the fan speed at 50% and the machine working on idle which means it was doing nothing we got 20 degrees with the fan at 50% speed and the machine doing 100% load it still only hit 55 degrees celsius which is pretty good to be honest with you at 100% fan speed and 100% load so the machine was working flat out the fan and the pump were working flat out we got 51 degrees celsius and when we overclocked the machine to 5.1 gigahertz it went up to 65 degrees celsius that is some very good numbers in all honesty so in conclusion, well this water cooler unit is a little bit different than usual. While it's not RGB, but it's not exactly stylus because it's got that digital display on there. So obviously if you're not a fan of all these bright coloured flashing lights, but you just want something like information of how hot your machine's running or even a, a trendy G running on the actual water CPU block then this could be the CPU cooler for you. Again it is a water cooler and it's not cheap but it is very different than whatever else is on the market. The temperatures and decibel levels we were getting out of the unit were very impressive and I can't really think of any real downsides on this unit apart from the fact that it, can, it connects up to your motherboard with a USB 2 header rather than your standard ARGB. But again, that's so you can use all the controls on there for obviously transferring the GIF from your Windows machine to the actual CPU block itself. Another good thing is you can actually adjust the CPU block pump speed differently or independently against the actual fans what are on the cooler. So you can have the fans running at 100% and the pump running at 50% or the other way around and you can do that with ease. If you're looking for something that is cheap, this isn't for you. If you're looking for RGB, again, this is not for you. If you're looking for something different and unique and that will stand out, which is different to all the RGB effects, what you're getting out there on the market at the moment, then this is definitely the product for you. And on top of that, it's got some pretty decent cooling abilities as well.